Okay, good morning. Um, I have this October 2024 paper um, for Unit 1, Physics International edX cell, the A-level. Uh, so it's on Unit 1, which is Mechanics and Materials. And one of my students is retaking this paper, so I'm using it as a final practice run-through for this one student who's um, trying to improve her grades before the end of the year. And so I know that a lot of people have been waiting for October 2024 papers. I've done the Unit 4 already. Unfortunately, I won't have time to do many more as I'm going back to full-time working tomorrow after the New Year break. So without further ado, let's go straight into the multiple choice questions. And remember, if you're, if you've got uh, friends who um, are taking this exam, um, and you notice this is a unit one, for example, you're in year 13 and they're in year 12, let them know about uh, the website, uh, my channel, and the fact that there are unit one and unit two and some unit three papers in uh, the playlist. So take a look and let them know. That would be great. All right, and if you're, if you're already uh, watching videos, you know that I would like you to help me by liking, sharing, and of course subscribing so you know when the next videos are made. Remember, the uh, section A is always 10 multiple choice questions in the international A level, which is very similar to the UK uh, version of the A level, where they also, in year 13, have 10 multiple choice questions um, at the beginning of their A level paper 1. Okay, so it's very similar, the two papers, and I will be starting to do some linear uh, walkthroughs as well. So the first question, very simple, is about units. Which of the following units is equivalent to the watt? Well, a watt is joules per second, so you can immediately save time in this exam by going straight to the answer. You, if you're confident, you know all this, then you can see that there is the only one which would be equivalent to a watt. Question two, it wants to know which uh, row, which of the table gives two vector quantities. So I've ticked all the vector quantities. So you can see the only one with two vector quantities is A, both acceleration and weight are vector quantities. None of the others have two vector quantities. Another quick question. Um, question three is a displacement time graph. So all you've got to check is that the units are kilometers per second, per hour. The units, I've circled those. So when I'm reading the questions, I'm taking in all the information, and that's why I circle things to draw my attention, and in this case, your attention, to these small points. They want to know which of the answers gives the average velocity. So average velocity is a total displacement divided by the total time, which is given by... D, yeah? So that's the only one that's going to give you the average velocity for the trip. Okay? So D is the answer. So far, it's been a very straightforward start to this exam. The next question is about a cable car. Yeah? Uh, hanging from a cable, the car is in equilibrium. So why did they tell you that? Well, it must mean that the forces on it are balanced. Okay, it says, which of the following um, form a Newton's third law pair of forces? Okay, with the weight, yeah, so you want to look for the pair that is a Newton's third law pair to go with the weight of the cable car, yeah? So it must be the same type of force for Newton's third law, and the only one that is the same type of force will be gravitational, yeah? So, because weight is gravitational. So you, it's not about Newton's first law. Newton's first law is when two, any two, two types of forces on one object, yeah, uh, are balanced, yeah? So you could say some of the others could be to do with Newton's first law, but for the Newton's third law, it must be the same type of force and it's acting on two different objects. So the weight of the cable car is being pulled down by the earth and 
Likewise, the gravitational pull of the cable car on the Earth is the paired force with the weight of the cable car. Okay, that's Newton's third law. Question five, it um, says a box slides down a slope at constant speed. So again, they're giving you the fact that it's constant speed. Uh, so that means the forces must be balanced again. So it's Newton's first law. Uh, weight and resistive forces both act, yeah, on the box. So you've got weight and resistive forces. So if you drew a force diagram, you would put it on a, on a slope. So you could have a slope. The object could be here. Obviously, the weight would be downwards and the resistive force would be uh, stopping it from sliding down. So that's um, a kind of force diagram. And A is the answer. It's the component of the weight parallel to the slope, yeah, which is equal to the resistive force, which is up the force, because obviously, if you know the angle over here, that angle will allow you to resolve the component of the weight down the slope, yeah, which is parallel to the slope. So the answer is A, and you can see why I've crossed out B, C, and D, because here it says is greater than. Well, if it's greater than, there won't be a, a constant speed because there will be imbalance of forces, yeah? And the components of the weight perpendicular to the slope, yeah, will be the reaction force, and this is a reaction force, yeah? Whereas the reason it's moving at constant speed is because the components of the weight pulling it down the slope is equal to the resistive forces which are stopping it from accelerating. Okay. Question six. A person stands on a moving staircase. The moving staircase increases the potential, the gravitational potential energy. So there's your output. Yeah. Uh, by 5,000 joules, every in 42 seconds yeah so you know joules and you know seconds so you can work out the power it says the efficiency is 0.63 and they want you to work out the power input so you've got to use the equation for efficiency in terms of what ratios as in watts rather than joules you can do either you know the efficiency and we know the useful power output is 5,000 divided by four, uh, 42 seconds. And therefore, the only unknown is input power. Change the subject, you will get this equation. And you can see that that matches this answer. So again, it's just algebra. Question 7. It says a student applies a force to stretch a thin metal wire, so we're talking about elasticity, describe uh, which of the following describes the wire at the elastic limit. So the key terms are elastic limit, okay? The wire is elastically deformed up to the, up to the elastic limit. That is true, okay? Uh, the B says it's plastically deformed. Well, no, that's beyond the elastic limit or the yield point where it gives in and it becomes it will never return to its original shape but uh, at the elastic limit if you remove the force it will return to its original shape so it is still elastically deformed and then uh, the wire is its maximum extension no because it can extend beyond the elastic limit and the wire snaps no it will have to go into the plastic region before it snaps okay so it's just Another reasonably simple knowledge question. Question eight, it says a student uses a bat to hit a stationary ball of mass M, and then as the bat hits the ball, the momentum of the bat decreases by delta P. So the bat decreases by delta P, and the uh, ball then moves with a velocity of V. And since we know its mass, we know that its momentum must be mv. So the loss of the bat's momentum, you can go straight to this. You actually don't need that. That was just me thinking. Yes, I'm scribbling when I'm thinking. Uh, so the loss of the bat's momentum must be equal to the gain 
of the ball's momentum. The student then does it again. This time he hits the bat with a stationary ball of mass 3m. Yeah. And this time the momentum of the bat decreases by two, twice the momentum before. So again, that's what is happening. So the loss of the momentum of the bat, two lots of delta Bs, should be equal to the momentum gain of the ball. This time we don't know, they haven't given us the velocity. Yeah, so we want to work it out. Now, since we know that delta P is MV mathematically, and they said that in the second time, it's double the loss of momentum. Yeah, over there is double the loss of momentum. Yeah, so once we, once we know that, we can equate the two um, gains of momentum. So in the first time, two lots of MV, yeah, because this will show that it's two delta Ps. So it'll be two MV, two lots of MV, uh, because you can see two MV uh, is equal to two delta P from here. So I put that in there instead of putting delta Ps. And you know that 2mv must also equal to 3m, because the mass is three times, by the new velocity. Yeah, the new velocity increase. So the only unknown um, is the uh, new velocity in terms of knowing it in terms of the initial velocity for the first time you get the bat with a lighter mass ball. And you can then equate those and then do the algebra and you'll see that the answer is B. Okay. Question uh, nine is about two boats pulling a ship at the angles shown. Yeah, the, the, the boats are pulling the ship by means of ropes. Yeah, as shown in the diagram. The force on A you can count as FA and likewise the force of boat B we can call FB. Okay, now they've given us the angle to the uh, x component or the forward component of the motion, and that's the direction um, that we're proposing that we're going to be thinking about. Which of the following expressions gives the forward component? So we want the forward component of both forces, of the total force, which will be FA and FB pulling in the forward direction. So you want the component of FA moving this way and the component of FB moving this way. And how you do that is you go uh, you use cos because it's going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. But a simple way that I remember is if you have to go through the angle, so the force is, the force is FA is here, this direction, if you go through the angle given, the um, component will be um, cos. So you're going through the angle that they provided. So that means it's going to be cos. Okay. So both of them are going through the angle. So you can see that even for B, you have to go through the angle that they've given. And whenever you go through an angle, um, it is cosine. And you can just do it by normal trigonometry, which has, is adjacent over the hypotenuse. So both of the A and B are going through the angles uh, provided to the forward direction. So that you're looking for both causes, and both causes come only in C. Okay. So that's number nine, one question to go. And this is about moments. A student puts a piece of wood on top of a cylinder so it's balancing on the cylinder. He stands on the wood to keep it balanced. Yeah. And his feet uh, are at distances X and Y from the cylinder, which acts as the balancing point or the pivot. The weight of the student is W. Yeah. So uh, between the two feet, W minus F and F, they add up to W. Yeah. So basically um, the total downward force um, are those two forces will will e equal the total weight 
which is the weight of the student, because it says the weight of the wood that he's standing on can be ignored, it's negligible. Um, so it again says the, the wood is horizontal and equilibrium, so that tells you the moments must be balanced, yeah, and the distances they've given us are x and y, so we're going to take moments to uh, the um, cylinder, the center of the cylinder. So if you take moments um, clockwise and anticlockwise, W minus F is pulling clockwise. So this is the clockwise moment to, from the pivot. And this is the anticlockwise moment of F to the pivot. You can then follow my algebra. I've expanded the brackets on the left-hand side. I've then um, isolated um, W because we want to say which one equals W. So if you do that, you will find, if you can follow my algebra, that is Fx plus Fy over Y, and one of them will simplify to that, and that is only A, okay? because they divided the y's here by that. So for this side, it will be cancelled, but for the left-hand side, the y will remain under the fx. Okay, so that would be uh, the answer, would be A. Hope that makes sense. Okay, so that's the end of the first part. I tend to do the multiple choice as the warm-up. So if you found that useful, Show your appreciation as I request to all my students because I do these videos for free and to help with the channel we need as many likes and shares and subscribers as possible to get a bigger reach uh, to get more students to watch these solutions. So if you can support us that would be great and uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.